Olá, meus amigos. Hello, my friends. Muito bom dia. A very good morning. Muita boa Or a very good evening. I believe that you who are not awake to go to work, you are awake because of a stomach ache, because of a headache, because of worries, because of insomnia. Whatever your problem may be, whatever your situation may be, Pay close attention. I want to teach you something. Something practical. Practical. For you to solve by your own faith the problem which you're facing right now because the Word of God is living and effective. And it is not just a political promise. But is saying it's not a political promise, it's a promise of life. Life with abundance, life with eternity. Let me get rid of the comments here to not distract those who are searching to know how to solve their problems. I know that all of us go through problems, all of us. Do you not think that I don't have problems? Do you not think that Esther does not have problems? We all face problems. We go through problems and problems and problems. All of us. But my biggest problem is the following. It's yourself. Oh, Bishop. Wait a minute. I am my biggest problem. Yes, because while you do not receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, I will not be at peace. I will not have peace in my soul. I will demand something from myself to do something to solve your problems that you may walk alone. Because it's not the will of God that you live in dependence of Bishop Macedo, Bishop Renato, Bishop Adilson, Bishop so-and-so and and the other of the Universal Church. No, none of that. God wants you to walk on your own feet. God wants you, my friend, to use your own faith. But faith is dependence on Him. Pay attention. Faith is not religion. Faith is dependence on God. You have the assurance that God is in in your life guiding you. But the problem, Bishop, is that I don't have the Holy Spirit. The problem is that I'm here sick, I'm suffering, I'm taking medication. I don't know what to do anymore to solve my problems. So I want to teach you to come out of this state, this critical state which you are living in, to live a new life. We spoke yesterday and perhaps, perhaps, I did not express myself well because Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, sick with infirmities, in need, whatever your problem may be. Come to me and I will give you rest. Now the question is, how will I go to Jesus? Bishop, tell me. But I've been to the church. No, I'm not speaking. Jesus does not say, come to my church. He doesn't say this. He doesn't say, come to the temple. To the house of God. No. Because you who is suffering right now, how will you come out if you're almost paralyzed? You're impeded from moving in a deep and profound suffering, diabolic suffering, satanic suffering. How can you come out of this situation? And you, only you, have the condition to solve this problem. How, Bishop? I will explain. 
I will explain. Pay attention. Jesus said, come to me. Do you think that this glorious and magnificent invitation which Jesus makes to all people, he does not invite believers. He doesn't invite Catholic spiritists. He makes this invitation to everyone. Be you a man, woman, homosexual, lesbian, be a thief, a robber, be good, evil, a person who is a murderer, a thief, a corrupt person. It may be whatever type of person. It doesn't matter. White, black, of color, Brazilian, foreigners. It doesn't matter. Young, old. It doesn't matter. God does not see you as you see in the mirror. God sees your soul. And he wants to save your soul. Because your soul is suffering. So you are in this depression. It's all in your soul. You have a headache. Your soul is feeling this pain. You're listening to me. Your soul, through your ears, hear me. I am speaking to you. My soul, through my mouth, through my lips, is speaking to you. So it's your soul which deals with salvation and only your soul of course when your soul is healed your body is healed you don't feel any more pain pay attention when your soul is healed your body is re-established your spirit starts to understand the greatness of God. But tell me, Bishop, how will I solve this problem? It's a practical, simple way. It's easy. It's easier than taking tablets for headache. It's easy. Easier than any other thing. How can Jesus say, come to me? How can Jesus, better saying, how can he promise, promise to heal those who are suffering this moment? Come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me and I will give you rest. Two words you need to keep, two verbs. Come to me. And I will give you rest. So explain, Bishop. Can't take it anymore. I'm impatient. Hang on, just a bit, just a bit. Because what you can and should do right now, this moment, to solve these problems, the first, you question God, you ask, my God, you said, come to me, how can I go to you? I don't see you, I don't touch you, I don't feel you, on the contrary, I feel pain, I feel a piece of hell within my room in this bed of pain, that's what I'm feeling. How can I come to you, Jesus? Then, here it is. When you charge, demand from this invisible God, our Lord Jesus Christ, when you demand, when you say, Oh my God, I don't know if you see me or you hear me. I don't know. It's written here in the Bible. I don't know if the Bible is true. I have doubts in respect to whom wrote the Bible, who wrote the Bible. This will explain later. But if, if you exist, 
if you are true, if the Bible is your word, and this word which you say, come to me, and I will give you rest. Now, you cannot promise me one thing which you cannot do. You cannot, prom you cannot demand from me something which I can give. If you say, come to me, and I will give you rest, then it's because I can come to you. I can come to you. And when you start to speak in this manner, in a sincere manner, in a frank manner, perfectly pure, even if it's daring and courageous, even if you're revolted, revolted, revolted with the situation, when you speak to God, Oh, my Father, you said, if this is true, if this word is true, then show me because this happens right now, right now. It can't be just now, because just now I don't know if I'll be alive. Alive. It can't be tomorrow. It needs to be now. I am desperate. I am giving my last breath. If you don't come now to answer me now, right now, right now, because you are the God of now. You are the God of now. You are the Amen. You are the Amen. To the goodness of my life written in your word. So help me. Give me this hand. I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. Then wherever you are, even if it's at the bottom of the pit, the deepest of the well, the pit in this world, be it in the hospital, the clinic, in a prison, be it amongst other prisoners, who are screaming, fighting, swearing, and etc., it doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the problems which are going on. The, the, what it matters is the following. When you speak, speak as I'm speaking to you. As this person who is invisible, untouchable, when you speak to them, you are expressing the faith which God wants from you. And He gave you this faith. He gives you this faith for you to call upon Him. Call me, He says, in the day of your troubles and I will deliver you. Come to me, all you who are weary, tired, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. His promise to deliver, to set free, to heal, call upon me in the day of trouble. To call is to talk to God, to pray, to cry out, to supplicate. I can call upon God for you, but obviously I'm not living in your skin. I don't have that sensibility to capture your pain. Only you know where your life hurts, where your soul hurts. You know where you're suffering the most, your problems. So, I can pray for you, but I will never say a prayer, a fervorous prayer, or there will never be a fervorous prayer as yours for you. If I were in your place, in your body, then I would know how to come and say, it's written in your word. This is truth or is it false? How will I know that your word is true? Forgive me, Lord, for this courage, this daring spirit, but I can't take it anymore. And if you exist, if you see me, if you're listening to me, then I want an answer now. Because you promised, call upon me in the day of trouble. And I am in the day of my biggest trouble. And you promised that you would deliver me. And you shall glorify me. 
That's it, my friend. Do you understand? So you don't need to depend on anyone. Speak to God. You speak to God. And speak with revolt. Speak strong. Speak out loud. Speak without being shy. Speak, speak, and speak wherever you are. You don't need to say a beautiful prayer. You don't need beautiful words, wonderful words. No. Speak the pain which you feel. Put out this pain through your words. And God will hear you, hear you now. He won't hear you tomorrow. I will not pray for you. Do you know why? Because I want you to make a way. You to get up. You to heal yourself through your own faith. Because through my, in my anguishes, that's what I do. When we reach the bottom of the pits, there is no one to cry to. Except to look to the top and scream loud, 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 loud. That he may see our pain. That he may feel our pain. Do you understand, my friend? Come out of this situation. Come out of this shame. Come out of this misery. Come out of this pain. Come out of this disgraceful life which you have been living through your faith. Through your dependence exclusively on the Lord Jesus who certainly is here as certain as God exists, as certain as God is with me, He is with you as well. He is just waiting for the expression of your faith. Show your faith now and you will break through. You will glorify God soon after you pray. You can do this. I will end this quickly for you to enter in prayer. And right now, right now, right now, in this moment, I switch off here and you turn, you connect with God. You connect with God immediately in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and until tomorrow.